Hi guys, welcome to Beals Science. I'm Craig Beals. Would you believe that with a little bit of science, you could take green coffee beans and roast them into some magical, magical dark beans that you can then brew and taste? And you can do all sorts of incredible experimenting and science, and all you need is a stove top and one of these stove top popcorn poppers. It's really quite simple. And believe it or not, I do this with my students every single year. And every single year I have groups of students who outscore the big roasters of the world. We do blind tasting and their, their coffee that they make right here in the chemistry lab, right on the stove top, is better than some of the big juggernauts. Now here's the thing. The great part about this is there's a whole lot of science, there's a whole lot of experimenting, there's a whole lot of controlling variables. We call this the chemistry of coffee. Stick with me, find out how easy it is to make coffee. Let's look at the equipment we need. Here's a stovetop burner, that'll work just fine. Or you can use a portable electric burner. Gotta be careful though, it's gotta get hot enough. Or you can just use a stovetop. Now we're using a Whirly Pop popcorn popper for everything. There are a couple different ways that you can keep the temperature. This is the digital thermometer. The trouble with these is that our students burn them up pretty quickly. So we've actually moved everything over to these analog ones, which work fantastic. They go up to high temperature, but you gotta do a little modification. So here's my quick modification. If you're gonna use an analog temperature probe like this one, you're gonna to have to drill a few holes and then you gotta get this thing attached in there nice and tight. I found the best way to do this is with machine screws and then a lock nut on the other side. We want the end of that thermometer to be within about a centimeter of the bottom so we get an accurate reading. Let's move on to roasting. So we've got our equipment, we've got everything set up. Now we just need heat and we need beans. You can get green beans at any local roaster or you can order them off the internet. I like to start off with a small amount so we can do some experimenting. So if we start with 32 grams, that will make us three cups of coffee. We can really taste this and decide if we like that roast or not. You gotta keep the beans moving. Beans should always be moving. Never let the temperature get below 350 or much above 400 degrees Fahrenheit. You're gonna get burned beans. You gotta watch the time, but you also gotta listen carefully. The beans will start to crack when they reach a certain temperature inside, and it sounds like light popping popcorn. It's kinda of quiet, but it's audible. You can hear it. And then when they reach a second temperature, they're gonna pop again or they're gonna crack again. This will help you figure out when to take the beans out, depending on what roast you're trying to roast. Then you gotta get these things cooled down nice and quickly. They'll keep cooking if you don't get them cooled down. And you wanna shake the chaff off. That's that little papery outside covering, kinda like the outside of a peanut. You wanna get it out of there, it's bitter. Now, you can go big timer. We've got some nice roasters in the lab where we can just absolutely change every dynamic and every parameter, but we only use this when we get to the point where the students have found a roast that they really, really like. Then we gotta brew the coffee, of course, so we can taste the coffee. Now it's important that you use enough beans. Generally when people make coffee, they don't use enough beans. Therefore they don't have enough grounds. Therefore they're not getting as much flavor out of it as they should. So follow the instructions on here and you're gonna end up with good coffee. As long as you've roasted it well. We like to use a French press when we're experimenting because we can control all the variables. Now there's a lot of ways to brew coffee and I've got some really creative ones that I'll show you at the end of the video, but we're trying to keep it standard. Now, one of the best things we do with the students is the coffee cup. We have them take their very best coffee and put it into a blind tasting competition, just like would happen at any roasting house. This happens for real. This is what's going on anywhere where they're roasting coffee for your consumption. So we put it in blind tasting, then we set them out and we score them. And if you want to know more about how to score coffee, I've got a whole bunch of information over at my website. The link will be down in the description. Well, I hope your coffee turns out as good as some of ours did, and I hope that it doesn't turn out as bad as some of ours did, but that's always the way it goes. That's part of the fun of the chemistry of coffee. But I would encourage you, go down to your roaster, buy a few pounds of beans or order them off the internet. Got some links down there that might help you out and roast your own. 
I think you'll be surprised. And I think you'll really appreciate coffee and science a whole lot more once you're done. Thanks for watching.